Welcome to Bold Week, with a series of highly unsafe events and a trio of E10 6Cs, including Jacopo Larch's repeat of the Parthian shot, Ed Morris's repeat of Olympiad, and finally, Tom Pierce's repeat of the fantastically named Human Skewer Direct. Parthian shot is a route with a long and fascinating history. It first shot into the limelight when Johnny Dawes top roped it in the film Stone Monkey in 1988. However, he never went on to lead it, and it wasn't until the following year where John Dunn eventually made the first ascent. It was graded E96C and had a huge reputation, not least because of the shipwreck flake that housed all of the gear that protected the route. The flake was supposedly quite creaky and flexy, and there were always questions surrounding whether or not it would actually hold in the event of a fall. And as a result of this, the route didn't see any further attention, or repeats at least, for many years. The route didn't receive a second ascent until 1997, courtesy of Seb Grieve, who immortalised it in the classic film Hard Grit. Seb made the scent in a series of wacky and weird noises, and took repeated falls onto that shipwreck flake, thus proving it would hold. After Seb's ascent, the route received a lot more attention, not least because the flake had now been tried and tested, and it wasn't the certain death route that people had thought it was previously. In 2008, visiting American Kevin Jorgensen made the first ground-up ascent, which was a landmark in the style. And it felt like the flake was going to hold forever, or at least it did, until 2011, when visiting Canadian climber Will Stanhope ripped it off, breaking his back in the process. Ouch. After that, it felt like we were transported back to 1989, with huge questions surrounding whether or not the route was either possible, because it was harder as a result of not only there being barely any gear, even less than there was before, but also because the flake had represented a significant and large handhold on the route, and it's no longer there. In 2013, Ben Bransby put those doubts to rest when he made the first post-breakage ascent of the route. <laughs> Ben is one of Britain's most accomplished all-rounders, but is also one of its darkest horses. Ben confirmed that the difficulty of the route had indeed increased, and that the gear had indeed become worse. Well, gear's worse and climbing's harder and it's more pumpy. <laughs> so it's harder in every way. That one there, that goes right at the bottom. And a bit of flake with the crack all the way around it. But, yeah, might not bother with that one. And uh, just above it, Getting the uh, the RP3, which is the biggest one, but it's uh, it's not very good. That's probably the worst one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that RP3, that's not very good. Uh, you place that one from well, the bottom. Well, it's it, but yeah. Yeah. yeah a bit stretched. So you get this rather oh, mashed up and scratched offset. Offset of three. Um, I wanted to get a new one, but I didn't. That goes in, and then you just put this one on top of it as well, next to it, the two. Yeah, I think probably the best ones. To compensate for this, he'd placed a side runner in the neighbouring route, a big cam up Brooks Crack, and whilst this may have protected him from a certain way up the route, it would not have prevented a ground fall from up high. Ben did test the flake, taking a fall from quite high up the route, and whilst the gear did hold, it wasn't without menace. And as a result of these combined factors, the route was upgraded to E10-6C, and has subsequently only received two further ascents, until now. In a long tradition of foreigners coming to the UK and making stuff look easy, Jacopo climbed Parthian Shot in July, and not only any July, but possibly the wettest July on record. Most people head point routes on the Gritstone throughout the winter months, when the conditions are much, much cooler and therefore stickier, not sloppier. <laughs> Jacopo told UKC, the gear itself 
even if quite small, seems okay, but the flake, or what's left of it, sounds a bit hollow. I don't think it will break again, but I'm not sure if the gear would hold a fall from the top, which would require a harder catch. I felt quite safe on the crux, but less so on the foot swap at the top, where my head switched into solo mode. Whilst the foot swap that Jacopo mentioned at the top is by no means the crux, it is without doubt the most heart-in-mouth moment of the route. And during Ben Bransby's ascent, it was the closest he'd came to falling. Just look at this footage of Ben making that first post-breakage ascent. Yeah, I couldn't feel anything. Fuck me, Ben. That fucking foot chair at the top. <sighs> Good effort, Ben. Oh, couldn't feel oh, my fingers yeah. at all. Yeah. I had a little moment then on that foot swap. Yeah. Couldn't feel either hands. Well done. I just got fucking hell, don't mess it up here. You know what you said awesome. about being numb on pebbles? Yeah. Couldn't feel anything. Oh, you bastard. I just had to just look at them. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. And just was like, it's on, it's on it. Oh. And then, yeah, I was on that, just stood up and I couldn't feel my hands, couldn't feel my feet, the rope was between my feet. I was just... uh, that was oh. so smooth, eh? Put my foot out the first time, didn't like it. Oh. Watch your legs. Oh, brilliant. Awesome, yeah. man. It's great to see someone so psyched for British Trad and we can't wait to see Jacopo come back, preferably when it's not raining. Next up, prolific Pembroke local Edmund Morris has made the third ascent of Neil Gresham's Olympiad, the Forbidden Head in Pembrokeshire. Neil made the first ascent in deep water solo style in 2012, and it was subsequently repeated by Steve McClure in 2021 in trad style. Neil originally graded the route French 8B, and Steve came in with E10 6C. There are pros and cons to each style, but there's no denying that Pembrokeshire does provide a tricky set of conditions to get routes in good condition. Being a sea cliff, they can often be damp at certain times of year, and also there's the matter of the tide. What makes Ed's ascent all the more remarkable is that it's his first French 8B, and what a French 8B to start with. Ed told UKC, it is one of the safer deep water soloing routes in Pembroke with all of the climbing above deep water 
four meters on a neap high tide. The hard climbing ends at 10 meters. Soloing it seemed like the more fun, slightly easier and safer option. It's got ample viewing platforms, large enough to lay out a picnic and a straightforward swim as long as it's calm sea. If you want to know more about climbing in Pembroke, check out the Pembroke Bond, which has just been released. That features writing from Ed Morris, alongside the work of graphic designer, Ramon Marin, and Ed's brother, Stefan Morris, a fantastic photographer. Check it out. And finally, Tom Pierce has made the second ascent of the Human Skewer Direct, E106C, a chair ladder in Cornwall, a route that was previously shrouded in mystery. First climbed by Mark Edwards in 2007, the Human Skewer Direct sounds bold, scritly, and pretty sketchy. And Tom had this to say about it. The Direct has a lot of loose rock. The 6C crux moves on it are only just above the gear, but I had no hope that the flake they were in would hold. Above the crux, there's more loose flakes and crumbly feet to the point that Paul, my poor B layer, was just being showered with rocks. E10 for the B layer, I reckon. There's plenty of good looking gear behind the flakes, but whether they would stay attached after a fall is another matter. There are also a couple of pegs on the lower wall too, but after being there for probably 20 years, don't look particularly solid. Whilst the fantastic photographs taken by Tom Last make the route look quite appealing, everything that Tom Pierce says about it makes it sound pretty off-putting. It's nice to see some of these hard routes in the Southwest receiving attention because they've laid in relative obscurity since their first ascent, at least compared to other areas like the Peak District. So good effort to Tom for making the second ascent, but if there's anyone equipped with the skill set required to climb this route, it's a bold young man who grew up on the North York Moors with Franco Cookson as a mentor. If that's not gonna do someone's psychological damage, I don't know what will.